It is the 31st of October 2025, my dudes, also known as Halloween, and so it's time for another spooky Halloween special. Ooh. And so let's play an undead game, Kerbal Space Program 2. It's dead, but yet here it is, somehow alive. Ooh. But I wanted to make things even spookier, and what could be spookier than replacing the goofy little green space frogs with something a little bit more cursed. Cursed begins with C. And what else starts with C? Capybara. Truly the spookiest, the most cursed of mammals. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Wait, I mean, well, that's not really what we're just doing in this video, right? It's not like, there's not a whole video to go. Uh, we've got our pilot and our very um, tenuous Halloween link. But the question is, where do we even go with our capybaras? Well, we're going to go to Laith because I didn't really know where to go, to be honest. So I just asked AI where a capybara would be drawn to in the Kerbal Space Program system. And it recommended Lathe because it said, you know, where would a capybara feel most at home in KSP? It would be Kerbin, Lathe, or Minmus. Um, so that's why I decided to go to Lathe. I'll elaborate a bit more in a second. But I just want to show you now my first attempt getting there. And this isn't like a practice run. I flew the entire mission to Lathe, and then upon arrival, uh, the spacecraft flipped on atmospheric entry, and it exploded, and everyone died, which I think you can agree. It's very spooky, but kind of not a great end to the video. So I went back to the vehicle assembly building and added a larger heat shield so we'd remain stable during late entry. I, uh, I once again did not test this heat shield prior to filming this mission. So we're going to just see how it goes together because I didn't want to film a third time. I was like, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Uh, I also tried to kind of, you can see there's kind of that weird adapter shroud piece is all like that upside down cone. I tried to cover it up with a fairing, but KSP2 fairings are really weird and it wouldn't let me build the fairing, so... Ooh, bit spooky there. So, we kind of got a really weird, awkward rocket shape. Gosh, I... Kerbal Space Road 2 is so... so many dumb things in this game, aren't there? Anyway, let's crossfade to the launch pad. Oh, man. KSP2, it was, it's, 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 oh, it's worse than KSP1 in almost every single object, objective measure, but that sound design and those graphics are pretty good. Uh, did have this glitch though, I was trying to switch to the horizon camera view, but the, again the camera got stuck and I couldn't zoom out, so I'm like now hugging the rocket's fuselage and I was trying to like frantically zoom out, oh spooky, an unexpected Kraken attack. So I switched to body cam, which as you can see the camera is now rotating with the gravity turn, it looks a bit weird. So I just tried again to change the horizon, and then it worked. So for those that don't know, if you've played KSP-1, which I'm assuming you have if you watch this channel, uh, I don't really like the auto camera, because it does that weird thing where it suddenly flips over once you reach orbit. I like free cam, because it maintains a, like a consistent camera angle throughout the filming of the mission. And horizon is in case, so KSP-2 doesn't have a free cam, it has horizon cam, which I feel like is basically the closest equivalents, that's why I was trying to switch to Horizon Cup, basically. Uh, but it's alright, Bob, Rodentberg, Tim C, Cappyman, and Bill Munstead, and the other Capybaras that you can't see, uh, are all are all absolutely fine. So, uh, let me just, I'm just going to read you uh, the AI slop that ChatGPT spat out when, it, when I asked it, you know, where should I send some Capybaras? So, it said, uh, if we think about where a Capybara would feel most at home in KSP, a few places stand out. Kerbin, lots of rivers, lakes, and warm climates. Capybaras are semi-aquatic, so Kerbin's wetlands and beaches would feel perfect. Now, I this is now Matt talking again. Obviously, we're not going to go to Kerbin, right, because that's boring. So then, Chad GPT continued, suggesting Laith, Moon of Jewel. It has oceans, a breathable atmosphere. The warm water would be a perfect paradise for a space for a space-faring capybara colony. I am now going to interject again. Um, I don't think Lathe's waters are very warm because it's so far away from the sun, right? I feel like they're probably freezing cold and really, it's probably not even water, liquid water. It's probably like some horrible methane that's blue for some reason. I don't know. Uh, the other suggestion that ChatGPT made was Minmus. Not exactly watery, but the flat icy seas could look like giant frozen ponds. The capybaras might waddle happily across the flats like they're on an endless winter vacation. 
It then said they'd probably avoid Moho, too hot, no water, Eve, too high gravity and crushing atmosphere, Elu, too cold and barren. So, if we had to pick the ultimate capybara destination in KSP, it's Laith. Warm seas, gentle shores, and plenty of room for hot, hot, hot tub-sized pools. And so that's why, well, that's why we're going to Laith. And from the size of the rocket, you can probably tell it's a one-way trip. This is a, an exile. You know, I'm not going to play this game ever again. <laughs> I don't really care if the capybaras get stranded there. I mean, I'm, I'm, I quite like the idea of just playing KSP2 every Halloween. It's like, oh, it's a dead game that's back to life. To be honest, guys, capybaras was not my first choice um, of mod showcasing KSP2. I really, really, really wanted to uh, do the Scott Bunley mod, but I couldn't get it to work. I don't think it's been updated to the latest version of whatever KSP2 version we're at before it was abandoned. So if you, uh, if you created the Scott Monthly KSP2 mod. If you could like update it for me, I could like pay you <laughs> if you message me, <laughs> and then maybe next Halloween we could do Scott Monthly KSP2. But yeah, um, or maybe uh, maybe a kitten space agency will be like playable. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. But yeah, here's another little fun, oh spooky curse thing. I couldn't get an encounter note to appear uh, when trying to select, well, trying to get an encounter with Lathe. So in KSP1, obviously you got those grey nodes that show up. Uh, on your orbit and your target planet or moon's orbit to showcase kind of where your spacecraft and the celestial body will be in relation to each other when you pass through its orbit. But as you can see, those nodes aren't appearing. So I basically just had to like, well, what am I going to do? So I decided to just get an orbit that passes by Lathe and then we'll just try and lock our way through getting the Lathe encounter. So yeah, very, very spooky. Very spooky indeed. I think you'll all agree. Oh, something else spooky. The burn that we did didn't get us on an orbit that matched what the maneuver planner said we'd get. Oh, goodness me. The spooks. The spooks don't stop spooking in this spooky Halloween special mission. And oh, oh, look. A lathe encounter just appeared. So I was like, oh, we've got a lathe encounter by sheer dumb luck. It's in a really bad spot. We kind of want it to be uh, kind of... This. We want to be encountering lathe around our dual periapsis because then our velocity relative to lathe is as low as possible so that... You know, our re-entry speed, or entry speed, I should say, is as low as possible, so that we're not as likely to overheat and explode. So that's kind of why. So I've been, I did a few adjustments to try and force our lathe encounter to be a bit closer to our periapsis around Joule. And now it's done. You can't really see because the game is so dark when facing the sun like this. But uh, we're now orienting ourselves along the maneuver vector and executing that burn. So there we are. Just bringing our lathe periapsis down. I wasn't really bothered about having any specific angle of flyby around lathe. I just wanted to get... An encounter with Lathe's atmosphere, we can slow down using heat shields. So we are entering the dual system. So, we're going to now set Lathe as our focus. Look at those big glowing concentric circles. It was a nice idea, but I feel like the map screen view is so much more cluttered in KSP2 with the big sphere of influence circles. It did get a lot better throughout KSP2's development. When the game first came out, it was like, oh my gosh, it's impossible to even read what's happening when you're looking at the dual system because there's so many big circles and all this. But uh, yeah, it got better, obviously, then... It died, and now it is being revived for our spooky Halloween special. So, uh, yeah, this video is probably not going to get many views. Is it? Um, but, but what can I talk? What is there to talk about, right? With KSP2, it's all—it's honestly quite sad. I—I I do generally just get sad when I think about KSP2. I mean, for me, it's like that's like a bit, a big, a big chunk of my potential internet career life cut because KSP1 is not getting any younger, and it's. 10 years since it was released, so I was like, oh, KSP2 means I can I can have a longer life on YouTube, and that's like, uh, well, maybe Kitten Space Agency will be alright, I don't know. Um, it's very promising from what I've seen, I've obviously played the pre-alpha for Kitten Space Agency, but uh, yeah, it's a long way off, um, for good reason, so yeah, it's going to be a while. Anyway, not to get too gloomy, this is not a sad video, this is meant to be a spooky video, and as you can see, we have survived entry into the atmosphere, so it's all going to be okay. Our capybaras are going to survive and they can live in their new home in exile on Lathe in these freezing cold, potentially not even water oceans. And you can't even see. I'm going to speed the footage up to splash down because really this isn't a very visually interesting scene to watch, is it? So we've got our parachutes all deployed and here we go. Splash down. And then some more spookiness happened. I couldn't initiate time warp. 
We're like bobbing up and down frantically and like you can see the little time warp thing at the bottom We've only got the three nodes available to us because those are the physics time warp settings I was trying to get it I was trying to click time warp when like the full time warp would just appear for a nanosecond But I couldn't get it done so what I did was I left to the Kerbal Space Center the, to the tracking station and just time warp from there hoping that you know the Kraken wouldn't destroy our lace lander whilst doing this. Here we go, we're going to time warp round, so we're on the daytime side. So oh, I should have said, the reason I was trying to time warp in the first place is so we could see the craft in the day, so you can actually see what's happening. Look at that! This beautiful scene. Gosh, modded KSP1 looks so much better than KSP2, doesn't it? Um, up and oh my goodness, look at this spookiness. It's like being like voodoo dolled and exploded and oh! The craft, it, it like kept on shaking itself apart due to phantom forces. How spooky is this? If you if that if that spooked you, then let me know in the comments section below on a scale of one to ten how spooky it was. Uh, so I reloaded a quick save and tried again. And uh, which capybara is this? Is that Bob? I don't know. One of them managed to break free, and then the craft once again exploded. But look, it's okay. He survived. He's in this lovely new home with a phantom floating inflatable heat shield there. Very very deep ocean. Sorry if you've got a thalassophobia. Um, yeah. I mean, he probably wishes that he didn't survive, right? Because what kind of life is this now? He's probably not going to last very long. I guess there's some islands nearby. I can swim over to them in his big clunky spacesuit. But, yeah. I eventually did some quick saving and quick loading attempts. And I eventually managed to get the craft to not explode upon loading. And I managed to get all of our capybaras out on EVA. Look how happy they are in their new home. Or maybe they're scared. Scared of this vast ocean abyss and the fact they have no means. I didn't bring in, give them any food or water, so kind of a scary old fate that they've met. Spooky. Alright, whatever.